In my previous video, I showed you how I built a file storage server using old hardware and Ubuntu Server 2004. I also mentioned that I wanted to encode live streams for Twitch on that machine, but later I noticed that the system would need more RAM and maybe a better CPU in order to do that. I still figured out how to implement it, so in this video I'll tell you how you can use a second PC for stream encoding without connecting a mouse, keyboard or monitor to that machine. Let's get started. The first thing you will need is obviously a PC that can handle the encoding. I would say for a dedicated encoding PC, it will be cheaper to encode on CPU, rather than having to add GPU with a decent encoder. The quality will be better when encoding on CPU anyway. For the GPU, you only need something that can output video to a screen for the initial setup. Depending on your motherboard, the system might be able to boot without a GPU installed, in which case you might be able to just use the one from your gaming rig to complete the setup, and then use the encoding machine via remote desktop exclusively. My motherboard sadly doesn't allow booting without a GPU, so I cannot try this, but it should theoretically work. You also need an operating system. I'm not sure if you can do this on Windows, but if you can find a software that lets you remote into Windows without being logged in on that machine locally, then it should work on Windows too. I'll show you how to do it on Linux. If you're new to Linux, then I suggest Ubuntu, Linux Mint or PopOS as a distribution, since those are relatively user-friendly and you'll find a lot of information in case you have issues. Often the solutions to problems on Ubuntu work for all three of those distributions, since PopOS and Linux Mint are based on Ubuntu. Besides that, you need a streaming software. OBS Studio runs on Linux natively, however the Streamlabs and Stream Elements versions of OBS don't. You can still use Streamlabs or Stream Elements for alerts and so on, but you'll have to add them as browser source to vanilla OBS. You also need a capture card for the output of your gaming rig, and maybe one for your camera, depending on which type you're using, if you're using one at all. There are plenty of tutorials on how to install Linux, and on how to install and set up OBS Studio, so I won't talk about that in this video. If you want to use the encoding machine for other functions in parallel, then make sure you have enough CPU cores and RAM to handle everything. Let's use a NAS as an example. The AVAS doesn't take a lot of power when nobody is accessing the NAS, but it will make use of the CPU when there is traffic. So if both need to run at the same time, you might want to go with a high core count CPU. The RAM will be locked either way, so make sure you have enough memory for stream encoding on top of the amount that you give to ZFS. If you are the only one accessing the NAS, then it's probably better to dual boot in this case. That way you can start up the encoding install without ZFS and without accessing the NAS when streaming and boot into the NAS setup when you need to access the stored files. This will free up the resources that would usually be tied up by ZFS. You'd only have to make sure you never need to access the NAS while streaming and that the encoder installed doesn't interact with the ZFS disks. You might think that virtual machines would be a good idea and this might be true, but don't try to implement the NAS as a virtual machine as it could cause problems with ZFS since ZFS needs direct access to the disks. First, you set up the operating system using a mouse, keyboard and monitor. Once your operating system is up and running, the next step is to set up the remote connection tool, so you can use the system without having a mouse, keyboard or even a screen connected. A lot of remote access tools only work after you log in locally on the machine you want to remote into. However, a piece of code called XRDP has the exact opposite requirement. You actually have to be logged out locally on the machine so that you can connect to it from your gaming PC. 
This is perfect for our use case. And it works well with the Windows Remote Desktop Connection tool, which comes with Windows 10 Pro. Windows 10 Home does not include this software, but there are plenty alternatives as well. I only tried it with the Windows software since it was already pre-installed. Once XRDP is working and you're connected to it using an RDP client on your gaming machine, you'll see the desktop of your encoding machine inside a window on your gaming PC. Now you can use OBS, which is running on your encoding PC, while sitting at your gaming rig. When I installed XRDP for the first time, and then use Windows Remote Desktop Connection to log in, it only showed a black screen. I then reduced the resolution to 720p and the color depth to 16-bit, and I deactivated persistent bitmap caching. I still wasn't able to log in, because I forgot I was logged in locally on the server. So I just logged out, tried again, and everything worked fine. The resolution is just like the screen resolution for your encoding machine. You can still encode 1080p video and even higher, but with these settings, the window that lets you control the encoder will only show 720p and 16-bit color depth. Using higher settings can make the remote connection lag a bit or even cause a black screen like I had. But you can try different settings to see what works for you. What I told you so far in this video is already enough to run the encoder machine without keyboard, mouse and monitor. But you still need to plug in the video outputs from your gaming rig and camera, as well as your microphone. What if you want to put the encoding machine in another room though? Or if you don't want to buy a capture card? At this point I have to mention that I never actually tried this, but nonetheless, I wanted to see if it was theoretically possible. There is a way to send the gaming rig video output and the camera output to the encoding machine over LAN. If you try this, make sure you're using a wired connection for the best result. Your gaming rig will have to do some light encoding to send the video and audio signal over LAN and then the encoding machine can do the final encoding and add alerts and everything. For this, you will need an integration for OBS called NDI. The link is in the description below. For me, the whole point in using a separate machine for the stream encoding was to reduce the load on my gaming rig until I can get a new GPU with a decent encoder. However, I wasn't sure if using NDI would reduce the load enough to be worth it in my case. It was around the time when I realized my Intel i7-930 was way too weak anyway, so I decided to not even try it. I added the information to this video though, because depending on your use case, you might not care about reducing the load on your main PC in the first place, or you have a new GPU with a good hardware encoder in your gaming rig anyway. It seems though that some people actually prefer using NDI over a capture card, and since it's free, it's worth a try if you're gonna build a dedicated stream encoder anyway. If you try any of the stuff I mentioned in this video, then leave a comment to let us all know how it went. If you have any other comments, questions or suggestions, then drop those below as well. Make sure to also have a look at the video description, because if there are any corrections or additions after this video goes live, you'll find them there. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, but keep in mind that this is not focused on a single topic. I use this channel to upload music I make and any videos that don't fit my gaming channel or the finance channel I will make with a friend later this year. Don't forget to leave a like though, if you think this video deserves it. Anyway, thank you all for watching and see you next time.